Hi everyone and welcome to the AI Syndicate channel. Today we have, well, let me show you. Today I'm sitting by the beautiful beach in Maldives. Gotta take advantage of the remote work situation we have going on. Now I'm in the Razor Crest. Seven days a week. That was fun to make. Now interestingly, I'm not using a green screen for this. And the camera I'm using is a regular video camera and not a depth camera. So how am I able to do real-time portrait matting? This was done using artificial intelligence. I'm your host Ansh Malik and this is the Innovation Showcase. <music> Today we have a paper titled, Is a Green Screen Really Necessary for Real-Time Portrait Matting? And this title by design points to one of those innovations that explicitly challenges a traditional way of doing things. So what is real-time portrait matting? Portrait matting aims to extract the portrait of the person in the foreground from their background. Once you can obtain the alpha mat for the person in the foreground, you can replace the background with one of your choice, like I did in the beginning of this video. Now, for a long time, the traditional and reliable method of obtaining this high quality alpha mat has been using a green screen, which most of us are familiar with. In the past few years, however, there have been multiple machine learning approaches to tackle the problem of portrait matting. So before we get into the advancements proposed by this paper, Let's quickly dive into the existing matting methods that have been used as alternatives to a green screen. In the absence of a green screen, a lot of the existing methods use a trimap as an auxiliary input. A trimap is a mask containing three main areas, the foreground, the background, and an unknown area. If we have the trimap, the only thing the technique that uses trimaps needs to focus on is estimating the foreground probabilities in this unknown area. As we can imagine, producing the trimap using human annotation requires effort, so that automatically could be a bottleneck for certain applications. There are techniques that avoid the use of trimap, but some of them require an additional background image along with the image or video containing the human. Background images could change from one frame to another, so that serves as a limitation to this technique. That being said, there is a high-resolution video matting technique that was recently published which we might cover in a future video, so look out for that. Another method attempts to generate a trimap using a separate model and then uses a matting network. While that is a great idea, having two models becomes computationally expensive. Now knowing this, let's peek into the results from the technique that the authors propose. That is a pretty good mat. Look at the details it is able to capture. Not bad. But here's the amazing thing. The technique is able to do this using a single RGB image only. No trimaps, no background image needed. Wow. Now, if you thought that was good, this technique can run at over 60 frames per second on a machine with a single GPU, which means it can be used for real-time applications. What's more is that the method from the paper outperforms various other techniques on a photographic portrait matting benchmark that the authors argue is a more comprehensive benchmark than others previously used and has higher sample diversity. So how is the technique able to do all this? To do this, they propose an architecture called the ModNet. The key to this architecture is that it splits up the complicated task of matting into three correlated subtasks, and then optimizes those simpler subtasks simultaneously. This is based on the assumption that neural networks would be better at learning multiple simpler objectives rather than one big complex one. So what are the three subtasks or sub-objectives? There is semantic estimation, 
which is the low-resolution branch that is used to extract the high-level human semantics in the frame. Then there is the detail prediction task. This is the high-resolution branch that focuses primarily on the details of the boundaries of the portrait. And at the end, we have the fusion branch that combines the semantics and the details and predicts the final alpha math. These three tasks are optimized simultaneously under different constraints. I really like this architecture. But the authors take it a step further to ensure that their technique adapts well to real-world data. Anyone who is familiar with AI knows that overfitting to training data is an extremely common problem and existing TriMap-free methods are victims to overfitting as well. So how do the authors ensure better generalization? They try to alleviate any inconsistencies in the three subtask outputs. The idea being that when we show the network images from a new domain, we might have inconsistent outputs from the three subtasks. For example, a pixel in the background may be predicted as being in the foreground by one module, but correctly by another. Intuitively, the output should be consistent throughout the three tasks, so the authors enforce the consistency using constraints. Another great trick to ensure generalization. Last but not least, they use a one-frame delay, which is barely noticeable at 60 frames per second, but helps to avoid flickering pixels and gives a general smoother output. The combination of these three contributions helps receive the outputs that you see. Can techniques like this really make green screens obsolete? Comment below if you think so, but it seems to be moving into that direction. If you enjoyed this video, smash the like button and subscribe if you would like to see more. Until next time.